Hey guys, this is Sam, and today we finally know everything we've been looking forward to about this year's MacBook Pro. Apple just finished announcing it up on stage in their October special event. There is so, so much to talk about, and I can't wait to go over every single detail with all of you right now. I want to kick it off with the design. You're going to see images of this beautiful machine all throughout the video and, of course, on screen right now as I'm talking. It looks incredible. If you like the design of the MacBook, you're really going to like the way the new MacBook Pro looks because quite a few design cues were taken from the MacBook and in fact, Apple even talked about that during the keynote presentation. I'm a huge fan of the design of the MacBook and the design cues that Apple took from there and implemented into the MacBook Pro look amazing. It's thinner and lighter than last year's model. The one stat I have is it's up to 17% thinner. But at the same time, Apple didn't really compromise anything. They didn't compromise battery life. They didn't compromise a headphone jack. They didn't compromise processing power to make the laptop lighter. So there's really no reason. In fact, there isn't any reason to complain about a thinner MacBook because processing power went up. We now have up to 10 hours of battery life, which I'll probably reiterate in a little bit. And it's also lighter than before without the sacrifice of even the headphone jack, which is insane. Huge props to Apple for making all that happen without sacrificing really anything. Now I want to move on to the keyboard. A lot of people voice concerns about this butterfly mechanism because I've heard that some people don't like the way their keys or the keys or their hands feel on the MacBook. Now Apple's changed it just a little bit from the MacBook Pro. There's a second gen butterfly mechanism that's supposed to make typing better than it is on the MacBook. Keep in mind this keys still look really flat and chiclet like. It's going to be even a big change from the previous generation MacBook Pro, but we'll have to wait and see until we get our hands on them as to how the actual keyboard feels. Let's talk about the display now because it's up to 67% brighter and it has support for the wide color gamut which was first introduced on the iPhone 7. This just means that colors are going to pop. The fact that the screen can go brighter than it already can is insane. 67% by the way, I think they referenced the number of 500 nits. So if you're not a comm major like myself and you're interested in like engineering and I don't really know what field that falls under, but 500 nits is a heck of a lot of nits. So keep that in mind when upgrading to this year's MacBook Pro. Now beneath the display is arguably the most interesting portion of the device, and that is the touch bar. More or less, it's a thin retina display that's in place of the function row keys on previous MacBooks. Now today, Apple also announced a version of the 13-inch MacBook Pro that didn't have a touch bar that was a little bit cheaper that still kept the function row, but if you really want to go all in on the MacBook, then you should probably get a model with the touch bar because it changes dynamically based on what you're doing. Apple showed countless examples on stage. Some of my favorites were how deep it was integrated with different applications. If you're a video editor like myself, you use a program called Final Cut Pro, well, not specifically, but you might, and you could like drag a clip to trim or crop or edit it just using the touch bar. If you are a DJ and you use the app DJ Pro, there's gonna be an update for that coming out soon that allows you to dynamically mix and change tunes using two hands on the touch bar at the same time because it supports up to 10 different touch inputs. It's an awesome upgrade. I can't wait to see how it works in practice. So many applications are gonna work with it. I think Keynote, Pages, Numbers, Microsoft Word, and the rest of the Microsoft Suite, I know will be adding support for the touch bar. It's a big deal and I can't wait to try it out because I feel like it's one of those things that you can't fully understand and appreciate until you get your hands on it. Now, some images of the new MacBook were released before the event officially happened and I made a video on that just a few days ago. You might have had a chance at seeing it. And basically, we saw that the Touch ID sensor might have been hidden in the touch bar and that turns out to be the case. On the very right side of the touch bar is the Touch ID sensor. It's embedded right in there. So Apple Pay will be supported on the new MacBook with fingerprint authentication, and I'm sure you'll be able to unlock the device using Touch ID as well. Now I want to move on to battery life because once again, we're getting 10 hours this time around. Last year and on previous generations of the MacBook Pro, we only had up to nine hours. Apple somehow managed to squeeze in up to an extra hour with this version, which is going to be awesome if you use your MacBook Pro a lot. If you listen to music, there's also better speakers, which is a big deal. On the 13-inch model, they relocated the speakers to the left and right sides instead of being hidden within the keyboard. Apparently, the dynamic range is going to be twice as good, and I'm really interested in seeing how these speakers sound. Apple still hasn't implemented Beats in any of their products, even though they own the company, so I don't really know where they're going with Beats in the future. But hey, that's a story for another day, because now we need to move on to connectivity and ports. This is 
really interesting, and I haven't really gotten a good sense of how most of us have responded in the tech community yet. So there is no traditional USB port. When you think of a USB, you're thinking 2.0 or 3.0. There are four USB-C or USB 3.1 and Thunderbolt 4 ports on the device, and there's four of those. On the MacBook, there was a lot of controversy because you technically couldn't charge it and then plug something else into it at the same time. That problem was completely allevi alleviated and solved on this year's MacBook because you have four different ports, so you can charge and connect things at the same time. One interesting point, though, is that out of the box, you can't charge your iPhone by plugging it into the new MacBook Pro because there's not a standard USB port. Something to think about if you're going to be buying this new MacBook, you will have to buy an adapter just to plug in your iPhone and charge it, which is kind of fascinating for me. Now also new is a bigger trackpad on the laptop because who doesn't want more room for activities? It's gonna be great to see how that works in practice. I didn't necessarily have a problem with the size of the old trackpad, but if Apple's gonna include a bigger trackpad, I mean, hey, I can't really complain about that. Now, of course, alongside everything else I've mentioned, there's faster graphics, faster processors, and the flash storage is a huge upgrade from last year to this year's model as well. So lots of upgrades all around. However, I think it's also interesting to talk about the baseline specs and prices of these laptops because let me tell you, they aren't cheap. So as I mentioned earlier, there's a model of the MacBook Pro without the touch bar that starts at $1,500. That's without the touch bar and the baseline specs of a 2.0 dual core Intel i5, eight gigabytes of slower memory, only 1,866 megahertz, 256 gigs of flash storage, Intel Iris graphics 540, and on that one, you only get two Thunderbolt, two Thunderbolt 3 ports. However, if you step up to the, what I wanna call the standard model, it's gonna be $1,799. So 1,800 bucks just to get a touch bar on the MacBook. Of course, with that, you're also going to get a 2.9 gigahertz dual core Intel i5 with eight gigabytes of faster 2,133 megahertz memory, 256 gigs of PCIe based solid state storage or a solid state drive, Intel Iris graphics 550. And on this one, you get four Thunderbolt 3 ports and you also get that touch bar, touch bar and touch ID. If you go the step up, you get the touch bar and touch ID in addition to a 512 gigabytes PCIe based SSD and everything else remains the same. Now, if we wanna step it up to the 15 inch model, this is where our wallets start to cry because the baseline for the 15 inch model with a touch bar is $2,399. You're gonna get a 2.6 quad core Intel i7, 16 gigabytes of fast memory, 256 gigs of storage with a Radeon Pro 450, graphics card with two gigabytes of video memory. And on that one, you still get the four Thunderbolt 3 ports. Or if you're feeling really crazy, maybe you just got a promotion at your job. Maybe you got a job in general, or maybe the YouTube money is coming in hot. You're gonna step it up to the $2,799 15-inch MacBook Pro with the Touch Bar and Touch ID. You're getting a 2.7 gigahertz quad-core Intel Core quad-core Intel Core i7 processor with 16 gigabytes of 2,133 megahertz memory, 512 gigabytes of a PCIe-based SSD, and Radeon Pro 455 graphics with two gigabytes of memory, which also includes four Thunderbolt 3 ports. That is everything that you need to know about the new MacBook Pros. Let me know down below what you guys think and if you will be picking one up. I think I'm gonna go for a 13 inch model myself, which I will hopefully be ordering very soon. And I'll try my best to make more videos on that whenever it arrives in my hands. Once again, I hope you guys enjoyed. Subscribe for everything else you wanna see about the new MacBook when it's released. And I will talk to you guys later.